Greetings everyone, I'm Kevin and here is the mid-year freak out tag. So it is July right now, but because this is the mid-year freak out tag, I'm only going to count books from the first six months of the year. So we're gonna pretend as if we are in an in-between state between July and June, okay? So, the last six months haven't started yet, basically. We're pretending that that's the case. This was created by Chami and Eli, and I'm going to have their original videos linked down below so you can check out the originals. But without further ado, let's go on with the first question. The first question is the best book you've read so far this year, and the book that really, really stuck with me and took my breath away was Head Over Heels. Like, oh my god, this book. I read this for Olympic of, Olympics of Fun uh, round two, which was this winter because of Winter Olympics. So this book follows this girl who used to be an elite gymnast. She was working her way to make it to the Olympics, but she was injured and so her whole world came crashing down. Everything that she worked towards, the only thing that she had in her life was gymnastics. Like everything revolved around gymnastics. Every waking moment she was living and breathing and doing gymnastics. Like that was her entire identity. She was an elite gymnast who was fighting for a spot on the Olympics team. That was who she was. And so this book starts off with her very depressed. She doesn't know where she stands. She doesn't know what to do with her life. Who is she now that she doesn't have that? And it's been a while since the entire thing with her injury happened. And she actually, she gets a job offer from a teammate on like, they work together like the men and the women or like the girls and the boys because they were very young. So they work together in the like Team USA gymnastics. And so a former teammate kind of who was in the men's category or the boys category, he reaches out to her and says, hey, um, would you like to co-coach with me? This girl is working on becoming like, she's working to make it to the Olympics. She needs some help and you were really good at this, um, the floor dancing, floor performing thing, you know, like on the mat, the, what they're doing there. I don't remember what that's called. She was really good at that, so he was like, um, could you come in and be a coach with me to help this girl make it to the Olympics? At first, our main character is very hesitant, she's like, no. But then she thinks about it and she decides to do it and she gets thrown into the world of gymnastics again. She remembers why she loved it so much, but she also remembers all of the issues in the sport. And this is a romance between her and her colleague, the guy who called her to coach with him. It's the romance. And I honestly, I was intrigued by this because of the romance and the sports aspect, because I love sports. It's also yellow, which is my favorite color, but I just, it's a sports romance, so I had to read it, and I love the romance aspect of this, but what I really, really love, and why it stuck with me, and I couldn't stop reading this book. I had it as an audiobook, and I, like, almost immediately, like, I'm getting this as a physical copy. I, like, that's how much I love this book. The whole commentary thing on the sport was so good and the discussions about how girls in gymnastics are treated, what they kind of go through, sexual harassment, unreasonable standards, that if you can't go to this level, which a very small amount of people can get to this level to make the Olympics, if you can't go there, you're nothing. And the coaches and everyone, they won't see a value in you unless you're the best of the best of the best and can go to the Olympics. If you can't do that, sorry, get in line, go back, you know, figure out something else to do with your life, basically. And so she works against that. And she is such an amazing character. I love her so much. And so I came for the romance and I stayed for everything else. The next question is the best sequel you've read so far this year. Uh, so the first thing I should say is that I don't read a lot of series. 
and Lester manga series. So the sequel that I read this year that I wanted to talk about is this <laughs> book. Um, so this is the third volume in the My Love Mix of series. It's not complete yet, which I'm... I'm mm, good boy. <laughs> I am still sour about that. Like, I want them all to be out so that I can just binge through the entire series. It's gonna be over eight volumes. I have four of them so far. I have read four of them so far. But I, I've, I've only read three because the fourth one comes out in July and it's not July yet. But I love this so much. I could have said the second as well because it came out in like February. But this one was so, so good. So this series follows a guy called Aoki. It's in an upper secondary school in Japan and they're gonna take like a mock exam thing or a, what is it called like a pop quiz something like that. I, I don't really know we don't really do a lot of things like that uh, from my experience um, as a teacher and uh, when I'm back when I was a student but anyways um, and he panics because he only has a pen or pencil and he needs an eraser um, because what if he makes mistakes? He needs to erase them. So we ask around like, hey, can I borrow your eraser? And no one can give him an eraser apart from the girl that he has a crush on called Hashimoto. And she just like, this is Hashimoto. And she's like, you can, you can borrow my eraser. And it's like, you know, an eraser and has this cardboard paper kind of thing around it. He borrows it from her, he's really touched. And then he sees that there is something written underneath this paper thing. So he takes it off and he sees Ida and a heart on the eraser. And he's like, is this that kind of thing that schoolgirls do when they have a crush on someone? They, they write the name on an eraser. But for this like quiz test kind of thing, the teacher hands out a bunch of papers to uh, the students at the front row and they hand them back. And Ida sits in front of Awaki. And as he gives it, to Aoki, the eraser falls to the floor. And Ida, being the awesome kind guy that he is, leans down to pick it up for Aoki. And he sees his name with a heart on it, on this eraser, and he just asks like, is this yours? And Aoki panics. And he's just like, no, it's not mine. And Ida asks, then who's is it? And he can't say that it's Hashimoto's because Aoki likes Hashimoto and he doesn't want to reveal to her crush that she has a crush on him. So he has to very quickly like, how can I get out of this situation without him knowing that she has a crush on him? Because Aoki didn't want to, you know, break her heart because he liked her. And so he finally just said like, okay, fine, it, it's it's mine. And it was like, okay, cool. <laughs> was a little bit like awkward about it as well, like shocked. But that like ended up with this entire premise. So that's my love mix up, like very basic but I adore this and like there aren't that many series or books where I adore every single character but with this I don't you know I don't read about one character and I feel like um can we can we skip you I want to focus on these I'm just so like into all of the characters and their stories that I don't really feel like wrap it up go on move on I, I don't care about you I want these I don't feel like that with these characters. They are really, really good. I love this manga series. It's absolutely great. I, I just, I absolutely love it. So this is the best um, sequel that I've read so far this year. The next question is a new release you want to read but haven't. And I'm choosing Legendarium. This is the sequel to Wonderscape. This was my favorite middle grade of last year. It's probably my favorite middle grade ever. And this is the sequel to that. So I am just super excited to read this and find out what happens after this book. But in this book, we follow these free school kids who aren't friends or anything. They just end up in the same place because they will hear a dog barking in this kind of abandoned house. And so they decide, okay, we're gonna help this dog. But somehow they end up in the future. And they're lost in the Wonderscape, which is a game, a virtual reality reality game. Like they don't have, you know, VR glasses or anything. They just end up in this game as if everything is real, but it's not real. And you have these kind of worlds, so they don't actually float around like that. 
but you can have portals going around, um, do challenges, meet with the boss of the different worlds, and you can like go around and there is this mystery that they have to solve in order to get back to the present to the time that they're actually from and i just absolutely love this and how the whole like the game aspect and the sci-fi elements to it i just really really adore this book and like i really enjoy the characters the the world building because it isn't just one world there are multiple worlds within this world and i thought all of that was very like brilliantly done and the mystery element as well like i just really really love this so i am absolutely excited to pick this up so then the next question is most anticipated release of the second half of the year i chose obviously my little mix of volume four but i also chose volume five because volume five is coming out in october and then the next volumes will be released in 2023 i'm sad about that but i have read this and i adored this so incredibly much but i it's july as i said and it came out in july so i have read it even though i don't count it for the first six months which is why i count it as a anticipated release instead of as you know best sequel where i put the third volume but this and the fifth book really really excited to read the fifth book i was really excited to read the fourth book and i am um, i understand why when i read it i loved it yeah but fifth book excited for the fifth book the next question is biggest disappointment this book oh my god i am i am furious at this book honestly this is swimming in the monsoon sea i got this book in 2016 and i have attempted to read it at least three times the first time i read it was back in 2016 I read like 50 pages in total and then I had to put it on pause. I didn't like technically DNF it. I just had like a lot of things to do in university that I said to myself like, okay, I, I have read 50 pages. I need to focus on other things right now and then I can continue reading. And I forgot to continue reading it. And then I decided, okay, I'm going to try again. And I did, but then the same thing happened. I had to focus on other things. And that continued to happen a few times. And then I had it on my uh, TBR, so TBR last year, and I just didn't end up even starting it. So this time I felt like, okay, I, I really, really need to read this. So I read it for my 10 books in 10 days challenge. And I really enjoyed it. Like I read up very, like I didn't have a lot of pages left. I had less than 100 pages left. And I DNF'd it because like the whole thing with this that intrigued me back when I bought it in 2016 we have this is set in 1980s in Sri Lanka the author is Sri Lankan and Canadian and it had something like queer about it so the main character was queer in some way I just didn't expect that his queer or gay awakening was with his cousin I can, you know, I can tolerate or accept a lot of things when I read them in books. Like, romance between characters, not when it's incest. That's like, I, I draw the line a bit at incest. Um, and this had that. Like, we had a half a page just describing what the cousin's penis looked like. Half a page! From from the main character's perspective, he 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 told us what his cousin's penis looked like, and I was just like, why why are we getting this? And yeah, and there was a moment after that that another like sexual, but actually more sexual um, scene happened, and I was like, no, no, because I with how these two scenes are described, like with the focus that the cousin's penis got, I feel like there is something else that is going to happen later in the book that i definitely don't want to read so biggest disappointment i haven't as i said i've had this for six years i haven't wanted to unhaul it because i wanted to finish it and then once i finally read it and enjoyed it it slaps me with incest huge disappointment the next question is biggest surprise and I chose because I didn't want to do 
multiple of the same books because some of the books that I am talking about I could have talked about in three different questions or more and I don't want to do that so other books that I've already talked about could have fit this but the book that I decided was Ascension. Ascension. I like doing that with this Ascension because it's like that you know. This blew my mind. This was so good honestly. I was intrigued about this because it's kind of like a blind dating thing in space. So they have these like five girls and five guys who are selected to go to Mars and there's this kind of it's a reality television show and one girl picks a guy to talk to and they talk like they will pair up at the end is the point at the end of this reality tv show thing you're gonna pair up decide who are we going to start a new life with on mars uh, have babies get married all of those things and start the humankind on mars so that's kind of like the premise that's what i expected but there's this whole conspiracy thing going on and a kind of like a suspenseful conspiracy and behind the scenes thing that is happening that I didn't expect but it kept me on my toes and it made me like I need to know what's going to happen. I thought that what about this that I was going to be most drawn to was the romantic reality TV show aspect of it but it wasn't and also the characters are amazing. This is honestly one of the best translated books I have ever read. Mainly I'm saying that because I know that some translated books have something lost in translation. It's originally in French. It was absolutely amazing and I can't wait to uh, finish the series. I want the, the next few books in the series ASAP. The next question is a favorite new author and I don't read a lot of books that are from the same author. These six months there aren't, like, I haven't read a book from an author that I haven't read before. So, like, not, there's no new favorite author in that sense because I didn't read that way. So I wanted to pick an author that I hadn't read from before, but that I still had read a few books from. Because I, I don't want to say, like, hey, I, I read this one book by this author, so it's my favorite. I don't want to do that just for myself because it feels weird. In my, like for me it feels weird so I picked one of the few offers these six months that I actually read more than one book from and loved both of them and it's Helen Wong who wrote The Kiss Quotient and The Bride Test. I love this book. I gave it five stars. I love the characters and I love the representation and all of that. I just find it so cute and amazing and just an absolutely fun read and I completely understand the hype around this series and the acclaim that this book in particular has gotten. I completely get it and the bride test was also absolutely fantastic. So yeah, I am definitely going to check out more of her books. I'm going to get my hands on the third book whenever I can. So yeah, so I am definitely going to check out more of her books at least um, in the future. The next question is newest fictional crush and again this fit a lot of characters. Most that I've already talked about like from books I've already talked about so I am not talking about them I'm talking about a new book because that's how I do things apparently and it's read from Get A Life Chloe Brown. I just really love how supportive he is like there's this moment like a quote between him and Chloe that I absolutely love. There is this kind of like thing. She says that she cares about everyone's feelings. And he says, really? How about your own? And she just like stops. It's like, oh damn. And I love that. Like she has a chronic illness, which I also have. Which hers is physical, I think. Yeah. She has a physical chronic illness. I have a mental chronic illness. So like I understand a lot of things that she goes through with that kind of kind of baggage that it has led to having like that kind of trauma and those kinds of what is it called? Like having a disability regardless if it's mental or physical is draining. Absolutely draining. And the amount of misinformed people wanting to help without really knowing 
that what they're doing is not helpful. I, I relate to that. I just, I really relate to her as a person. And I feel like I really understood why she liked him so much. And I absolutely adored him and how he took care of Chloe and just how he, you know, talked to her, how he, how, how he was with her, I thought was all really good. And I really, really liked him for how he treated her. And as we said, I would love to have a rent in my life. The next question is newest favorite character. And I chose Virgo from Who Let the Gods Out. She is brilliant. She is this snarky, funny girl who has powers. She is a constellation in a girl form. And she's just so cool. She is so cool. She's that kind of like when you are in middle grade or in like lower stage, like when you were younger, this is the kind of girl that everyone wanted to, at least like I would have loved to have her as a friend. She is so cool. So like absolutely amazing. She's just super fun. Like look at this girl. She's a very like funny driven character who goes for what she wants. And she can also be very sarcastic, ironic. I just, I absolutely love her. I would have loved to have her as a friend when I was younger. She's just absolutely amazing. I, whenever she was on a page, I loved it. She could enter the page with her name and I loved it. The next question is a book that made you cry. A Man Called Uva. Like, people told me that this was a feel-good, happy book. I did not expect that ending. I am not okay with it. I'm honestly, like... Okay, we're not talking about it. We're not... I'm not talking about it. A book that made me happy. Like, again, like, a lot of these books go hand in hand. Like, they mood they are they fit multiple of these questions but a book that definitely made me happy that was such a joy to read was game of stars this is the second book in the kiran mala and the kingdom beyond series i absolutely love this series i just finished the third book and i really enjoyed it as well i really hope that we will get a fourth book even though i i really like the the third book but if she decides to do a fourth book i i won't stop her i would be like give it give, give me give me i want it um but i just really enjoy this so we're following Karen Mala, and on her birthday which is halloween she comes home and her parents are gone they're kidnapped and she finds out through these two boys who come from the kingdom beyond so they're from this mythical place that is beyond our realm basically. There's apparently all of these stories that she heard growing up from, that were, you know, these tales and legends and mythologies from India were true. And she grew up hearing that she was a princess, an Indian princess, and she thought that her parents were just, you know, like a lot of different parents calling their daughter a princess, dressing her up in fairy tale clothes. You know, she just thought that, okay, um, that's why they're calling her a princess, because she She's their little princess. But then she finds out that she's actually a princess. And she has to go through a lot of different challenges and quests to get her parents back. That's just the first book. I can't talk about this book without spoiling the first book. But this was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. It involves a reality competition game, which is why it's called Game of Stars. I just really enjoyed this series. It just blends, you know, humor, mythology so well, as well as like, we have these really awesome characters. I love Karen Mala. She's a great main character. I adore her. She's so funny and nice. And the, just the way that she takes in the world is like, it's such a, a nice perspective to read through, I feel like. It's definitely a book that made me happy. The next question is the most beautiful book you bought so far this year and I chose Medusa. Look at this cover. Just look at this absolutely brilliant, gorgeous, amazing thing. 
I I love it. I absolutely love this cover so much. Like I can't decide if it's a photo or not. Like did someone draw this or is it a picture? I can't tell. Like that's how good it is. Like the level of detail. Like I, I honestly I can't tell. It's gorgeous. This beautiful book broke me. It it ripped my heart out and never put it back. And it's just, you know, like so painful. Like Medusa is one of my favorite characters from Greek mythology, Hellenism, that kind of thing. I adore her. I relate a lot to Medusa. She's this really cool, powerful woman who something awful happened to her and she still like found the strength to move on even though people, the gods, kept throwing shit at her because that's basically what they did. She kept moving on and she's just such a powerful character i i just love her and i feel like like this book was written for me because this i have been wanting a retelling of medusa's story in this kind of format and it, here i got it and i loved it the only thing that bothered me was the only thing in the book that was supposed to bother me and it was the rape scene and i just i flew through this book until we got to the rape scene and then i had to take like hours of break between reading pages of the book because it affected me so much which means that it was done well i almost gave this book five stars i think i gave it 4.5 because i wanted it to be longer it's a very short book it's not even 200 pages i wanted it to be twice as long a lot of the story would remain the same we would just get more time with the things that happened to her more time with her dealing with all of these things i felt like would have done the book a service it's still an amazing book it's still like 4.5 stars absolutely fantastic if you're interested in Greek mythology, if you're interested in learning more about Medusa's backstory, definitely pick this up. It's great. Um, you will probably change opinion on other people in Greek mythology and Hellenism, though. Not gonna say any names. I honestly, like, The Rapist is part of another series that I that I loved. And I'm kind of scared to reread that series because I feel like his name and his presence in that series all i'm gonna think about is this book and what he did to medusa and i don't know if i will be able to separate the two because it is technically the same person it's just how he was portrayed into different works of literature but trigger warning for this is definitely you know rape trauma ptsd as well and unfair treatment of drama like people going through trauma and you know victims of trauma i just again like this is gorgeous most beautiful book that i bought this year what books do you need to read before the end of the year and unfortunately last year i did this tag as well and two of the books that i'm talking about i talked about for this question last year so the books that i said that i was going to read by the end of the year last year were my the life below this is the sequel to the final six i love the final six it's a great post-apocalyptic ya sci-fi it starts off on earth we're following a guy from italy who is uh, he goes to the u.s for this kind of training camp thing to make it to the final six and the final six will go to spain to spain to space they will go a little further than spain they will go to space I think they're going to Mars. A lot of these have, like, when it's traveling with Ascension as well, it was traveling to Mars. I think they're traveling to Mars as well. But they have to work through to get to become the, one of the final six to make it to Mars. The first book ends with that journey to Mars, and this is what happens after. So I am really excited to see what will happen to the characters now, after the first book. The other sequel that I talked about last year, or that I needed to read before the end of last year, um, that I still haven't read, <laughs> uh, is Obsidio. I actually, like, Gemina I had as well as Obsidio last year, but Gemina I have read. So it's only this brick that I have left. Um, so that's good that I have only the last book in the series to do, to, to, to do, to go, to read words. But this is the last book in the series 
that I'm going to read. So I don't really have a lot to say about it. I love the first book. The second book was a huge disappointment for me. I think I gave the first book five stars when I read it last year. And for the second book, I, I gave three stars. I didn't really like it. And so I'm very, you know, hesitant about going into this book because there was this trope that happened in the second book that I hate in sci-fi because it's so convenient and I hate when it's used in science fiction because it's like oh all of these I can't uh, mm, I can't say it's a spoiler I just realized like I can't even you know give an example because you, you might understand what I mean but I didn't like that I hate that trope it, mm, I don't like it so with this I I, mm, I yeah, that's kind of like how I feel. I want to read it before the end of the year. I don't want to go into next year with this unread again. And the last book that I want to read before the end of the year is not a sequel. Um, it's Aristotle and Dante and Technica Hemnes and Um, I am um, like 50 pages into this book and I keep forgetting about it. Um, the good thing now is that I made this like language tracker language progress tracker journal where i track like how is it going with my language learning and german has its own sections for german and thai specifically and for german i do have the goal of reading over 100 pages of this book in august and a goal that i have for the rest of the year is finish it but doing that kind of goal for each month for my German journal to read this, I have to remember to read it. Like hopefully by doing that, I will actually get to read that. Because my issue has been that I have forgotten about it. So this is definitely a book I want to have finished by the end of the year. Okay, so that was the mid-year freak out book tag. I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you next time. Good reading. Bye.